Hey everybody, this is Dr. Rob. Welcome to Biblical Genetics. I'm sitting in my office at Creation Ministries International musing on a long-term experiment that world cheesemakers have accidentally performed. And it's something that informs us about the creation evolution debate. In fact, I wrote this up in a recent creation magazine. On the back cover was my article, Is Your Cheese on the Verge of Extinction? Yes, cheeses like Brie and Camembert and Roquefort are in trouble. The reason for this is that even though cheese making is an ancient cottage industry going back millennia, modern industrial processes needed fungal spores that would produce consistent results. And by constantly selecting for similar uh, taste, similar texture, similar maturation time, similar color, they accidentally stumbled upon several strains of fungus that don't sexually reproduce. And because of that, they've just been breeding the same fungus for over 100 years, again and again and again. And these clonally reproducing organisms only make copies of their own genome. And over time, mutations have built up to the point where the fungal uh, strains are having a hard time reproducing. So in the future, you might not be able to go down to Costco and pick up a thing of brie for your special party where, you know, you put your brie and you, you microwave it and melt it, have your little crackers and your little jelly. That might not exist. Or the brie that you think you're getting will be slightly different than the one that you're used to because they have to do something. They've got to go back and either recreate brie from scratch from by rebreeding different fungi or getting it to recombine with other strains to bring in fresh material because it's at the end of its lifespan. Almost all species, including bacteria, exchange genes with other members of their species. This is what has allowed life to persist for several thousand years now. But they just did recently discover that penicillium, of course that sounds familiar, that's the thing that they use to produce the early antibiotics like penicillin. Well, penicillium roqueforti, which is behind roquefort cheese, can be triggered to go through sexual reproductions. Therefore, they're hoping they can take Penicillium roqueforte, and they're thinking they're going to breed it with a fungus behind another cheese called Terminion Blue and create something that they can, I don't know, kind of like select for a brie-like strain, a brie-like texture and flavor again, because brie might be doomed. This new development interacts with the creation and evolution debate in several interesting ways. First of all, we understand that sexual reproduction is necessary for living things. Therefore, it's easy to conclude that when God created life, he created it to sexually reproduce so that it could survive over time. The few things in the world that don't go through sexual reproduction are things that either their sexual reproduction mode broke and they can no longer do it and they are doomed to an eventual extinction, or the universe isn't billions of years old. Life isn't mil millions or billions of years old. It's only thousands of years old, and therefore that's why some things that don't sexually reproduce can still persist. It also interferes with all origin of life scenarios because the earliest life forms in the evolutionary theory are not going to be able to do sexual reproduction. That is something that's very complicated. It requires at least dozens of genes. It requires hundreds of proteins and a very delicate balance and dance of molecular machines that make copies of DNA, that cross over chromosomes and that separate the chromosomes. These earliest life forms are not going to be able to do that. Therefore, they are doomed to extinction. They're not going to persist for billions of years in a clonal state. No, that would kill them. So in the end, I'm very happy about this new discovery. This is applied science that directly influences our understanding of the origin of life. And because we can see that non-sexually reproducing organisms are doomed to extinction, all origin of life scenarios are moot. They're not going to happen. So I'd like to give a big shout out to the Brie and Camembert breeders of the world for showing us that evolution can't be true. Now, you didn't intend on doing that, but your long-term experiment has showed us that sexual reproduction is necessary. And it's just right there in my article in Creation Magazine. If you'd like to go to Creation Magazine, there'll be a link in the show notes. Thank you for watching. You all have an awesome day.